Hello and welcome to World Cup Today. I'm Pete Sharland and today I'm joined by Gary Taylor. Gary, what are you doing? Uh, I'm just etching England's name into the World Cup trophy, mate, because, ladies and gentlemen, football's coming home! What is it, Adrian? What is it? What is it? It's coming home! That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's finally happened. England have won a penalty shootout. The main man, Ian Wright, was every England football fan when Eric Dyer slotted his penalty past Ospina. And the reaction here in the studio, yeah. right, he can't watch. <laughs> <laughs> so England beat Columbia 4-3 on penalties, the first time they've won a shootout at a major tournament since 1996. To put that into some context, the last time England won a penalty shootout, Marcus Rashford wasn't even alive. So obviously this meant an awful lot to everyone, but Pete, I'm especially thinking the guy behind us, Gareth Southgate, what it must mean for him. I mean, he missed possibly the most famous penalty of all in England history. Those tears, I don't think anyone who watched that night will ever forget those. But for him to be the manager in charge of this penalty shootout victory is going to mean so much for him. And he deserves a lot of credit too. I mean. Some of his changes were criticised at the time for being a bit defensive, perhaps rightly so. Yeah. But Eric Dyer and Marcus Rashford both stepped up at critical moments and slotted away their penalties. And fair play to Dyer, he did miss an absolute sitter of a header. But to kind of get that out of his head, clear his head, take a winning penalty and put England through to the quarterfinals is, yeah, good lad. Oh, Gary, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm hearing something in my ear. I believe we've got live pictures of the status of football right now. So Gary FIFA have confirmed that it was Harry Kane who got the Man of the Match award. I'm not too sure about that mate, I mean I didn't mind to refer that to VAR myself. I thought Harry Maguire was absolutely sensational. He's just settled in so well to this back three that Southgate's playing, He's he wins headers, he can play with, with the ball at his feet. He's a threat going forward, attacking corners and set pieces. He's just such a good player. I just really enjoyed watching him. I mean, Maguire's a player who, two years ago, he was at Euro 2016, he was watching from the stands with his mate. And now he's here in Russia, starting for England. And I don't think there's a single England fan who doesn't get a little buzz of excitement when Harry Maguire picks up the ball and starts charging forward. Oh. What a scene. So while England were cool and composed on the night, the same can't be said of Colombia, who completely lost their heads. Pete, tell me about what happened to them. I mean, there were two major lapses in concentration and discipline from Colombia. The first came when England had a free kick on the edge of the area, and Wilmer Barrios, he sort of let his head into Jordan Henderson's chest, but then went up into his chin. It was like, almost like an uppercut with his head. It should have been a red card, VAR went to it, decided it was a yellow. In my opinion, if VAR is looking at that, they should allow the referee to do the same. Don't just give the VAR opinion. Save the referee, go over to the side here and have a look and see what you think. Anyway, in the second half, Carlos Sanchez, he gave away a penalty in the first game. In the, free, uh, the, uh, the set piece, he's wrestling Harry Kane. Just pulls yeah. him to the ground. Again, you know this. Harry Kane's in the headlines for exactly this sort of thing. He's drawing these fouls. What were they thinking? I can't help but think that Barrios's headbutt was like a little version of Zidane's against Matarazzi. But how has he not got punished with a red? I don't know. In the quarterfinals, England will face Sweden, who beat Switzerland 1 0 earlier on Tuesday. Here's a match report for you. Sweden are into their first World Cup quarter-final since USA 94. We can only imagine the scenes and celebrations in Sweden. After all, this is how they celebrate getting to Russia. <laughs> of course, if England do get past Sweden, then it's going to be Russia or Croatia in the semi-finals. Good teams, but nothing for England to really worry about. Then it's the final against one of Brazil, Belgium, Uruguay or France. All very good teams. But then again, England are a good team. They've already proven that so far this tournament. Yeah, I mean, they've just beaten what's been put in front of them and you can't do more than that. 
I mean, there's a different feeling about this England team. They really feel like there's something special building and me personally, I feel like this is the most excited I've been about an England team probably since Euro 96. And we got to the semi-finals there. And I genuinely think we can go one step further and at least reach the final. Lord, what can I say? I'm just so excited. Words can't describe how we feel. I love it.